Tonight's boxing action proudly brought to you by Madison Sport. Welcome to In the Red Corner. We're coming to you from the ABA Stadium in Auckland as we watch Aluri Moyoyo come into the ring with uh, a guy that everyone knows from Australia, Muhammad Azuri. Fought under the name of Muhammad Ali, of course, in Australia and beaten some of the great Australian fighters. And we're about fight. ready for the start yeah, here tonight. Obey my commands at all times. You understand? When I say break, you stop punching and back away. You understand? Good luck. Our referee, Mike Landon. Yes, well-known New Zealander, Mike Landon, as we watch uh, Muhammad Azuri and uh, Aluri Moyoyo. That's a Moyoyo in the black trunks on the right of our screen now and Muhammad Azuri in the blue. And boy, can this kid fight. He's fought some of the best in Australia and unfortunately beaten some of our Australians. He's beaten a, a name you'll all know, Sean Sullivan, just beaten him recently in May this year. James Ellis fought for the Australian Cruiserweight title. He's beaten James Ellis. He's beaten Brett Smith, Costa Chondros. See Auto Melita as he uh, goes to the body. Uh, Moyoyo gets a warning from our referee not to hit on the back of the head. Azuri, he is a good fighter, well balanced, great hands. Not a big puncher by any stretch of the imagination, but got a good work ethic, works, uses all of the ring, good defensive skills, as we just witnessed there. This should be a good fight. I don't think it's going to reach any of the great heights. As we see at the end of the first round, it was a good round by uh, Muhammad Azuri. Nothing great, but he just did enough to uh, to uh, eke out the 10-9 on our unofficial scorecards. As we watch a little bit of the beauty and the brawn coming to you from the ABA Stadium in Auckland, one of the more popular venues over here where they have lots of fights. As we watch Aluri... Moyoyo Mensa. From Brad, this night was uh, promoted by Heartland Boxing uh, on September 22, and they're great supporters of Peter Kariuki and uh, Muhammad Azui in their attempts to reach a world title, and uh, they'll do everything in their powers to, do, to make that yeah, happen. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a great team over there. They're doing a terrific job. They've got, you know, the right credentials, but they've got the right commitment, and they're doing the right thing by these young guys, and, and it reflects in their performances in the ring because both Azuri and, of course, Peter Kariuki haven't been beaten in a couple of years since they've fought for these guys and they bought, fought some quality opponents but what they've given, they've given them a reason oh. to fight. They've yep. given them something to fight for. As we watch Muhammad Azuri in the blue trunks and uh, Olori Moyoyo from Canningdale, Canning Town in London as we see the start of the third round. Just feeling each other out, pensive careful, watchful Moyoyo, very careful he knows the record of Azuri 2000 Olympic Games um, contender here at Sydney 2000, stayed on here beat Mark Alexander in his first professional fight at Southport RSL as they come together, referee breaks them. I think you refereed that fight didn't you Brad? As a matter of fact I did, it was uh, at a good fight too, it was a real upset because Mark Alexander went on to win the Queensland Championship fought for the Australian uh, heavyweight title and uh, it was a good fighter Mark Alexander from up at Gympie, the fisherman as we's effectively known. Is he still the champion? No, he's not. He vacated that title um, he, uh, so that um, Nathan Briggs can fight for it. He, he's, unfortunately, Mark Alexander is a self-employed fisherman. He goes away for eight and ten days at a time. Oh, oh as Azuri just gets a little cute. He tries to get lo to load up too much on that right hand. And, of course, it's, it's a warm night over there in, uh, in Auckland and uh, a little bit of uh, perspiration, a little bit of humidity has made the, the, uh, the mat a little bit slippery. Azuri, hands held up high. It's good to see a guy with his uh, skills holding his hands up high. He can bang a little bit, uh, Moyoyo. And, uh, and I think Azuri knows that. He doesn't want to get caught by a couple of those big, wild punches. Fox. Hey, watch your head. He's an interesting boxer to watch, Brad. He doesn't, uh, Muhammad Azui, he doesn't like to get hit. He's got a great defence, and I think yes. that's part of his game plan is to make everyone miss. 
Well, I can I can see he's you know it's, I haven't seen him for a number of years now, but uh, but his uh, his his ethic is still there. His ideas are still there. Is hit and not be hit, which is a great ethic when you talk. You know, in our sport, you don't want to get hit. It hurts. You know, and uh, I'm the biggest sook out, so I don't want to get hurt. So, uh, and he's got that same idea, but he, he uses all of the ring. And then what he does, he takes his time and picks his moments when in, in order to punch. He's he's efficient with his punching. He uh, he takes his time and he doesn't miss a lot. You know, the punches that he throws throws he'll often score with as we see uh, Moyoyo there just throwing punches willy-nilly often hitting the gloves using energy but you know we're talking 10 round championship fights you know you've got to preserve your energy yet you still need to have a work ethic and a work rate that's going to win each of those three minute rounds round number three here at uh, at Auckland and Azuri just a clear leader at the moment effective aggression is what's going to win this he pops the lead out as Arroyo there's a clubbing right hand well balanced as you see pars away the the left hand misses Oyo misses uh, with his own left hook he's got a good body Moyo Moyo he uh, looks like he's done the work as well as see the end of the third round here and it's another good round as we go into the fourth round with uh, Muhammad Azuri versus Alori Moyoyo from Canning Town in uh, London in Great Britain just a little bit miffed as to the work rate of um, of Muhammad Azuri. Standing, he's standing just a little bit too tall for my liking, uh, Moyayo. He needs to crouch down. He needs to be able to try and sit on his punches, bend on that front knee a little bit so he can get a little bit more flexibility with his left lead as he goes back. Azuri, great hands, clubbing right hand over the side. I initially thought there was a size difference, but it, I think it is just that, that uh, Azui is crouched down and yep. setting himself. Well, you look at the, you look at the Azui's his shoulders, are t- his head's tucked down in beside. See, he can't afford to get hit by... But he's a big, powerful guy, uh, Moyoyo, and, of course, he's, uh, he's, he's really car- carrying in behind those punches. He doesn't want to get hit with him, so he's using his gloves very, very effectively here, and he's crouching down a little where he's a harder target, where Moyoyo is a little taller. He's, he's a bigger target, but... Uh, in a moment, you're going to see Azuri. He will unload with a left, right, left, right. He's, he's a basic fighter. He's got the basics, and he just uses the basics, but he uses them very effectively. There's that straight left, and that's his game plan because he's a bigger, stronger guy, Moya. And I think Azuri's idea is just to stay there, pick his moments. As Moya goes to the body with a searching left hook, leads head, and Moya there, he picked it again, but missed. Taking his time. Azui seems to be a fighter that will uh, look for the points victory before the the knockout. Well, he's not a big puncher, eh? and you know, and he, he's he's won very very few fights by stoppage, and uh, this round is uh, is a good round. It's not a lot of action happening, but it's uh, you know it's a it's a chess game. It's an arm wrestle at the moment. As we're inside ten seconds of the fourth round. Good solid left lead. Another nice little left lead by Muhammad Azuri. And this is a real arm wrestle as we see the end of the fourth round coming up. Here's that nice straight left lead again. And here's the clubbing right hand that went straight over the top. I think the 10 second tap, Brad, was a one of someone in the crowd someone, hitting yeah. some clappers or. Yeah, I thought it was a 10-second tapper as Azuri backs uh, Moyoyo back and Moyoyo calls him in. <laughs> so little nice smile. All but... you got? Give me some more, he says. Now he uh, backs Azuri up. He throws the little right to the body, followed by the up. That's a good punch when you can do it. There, now he's starting now to he's sit crouchy. down. You see how he's starting to crouch, bend the knees? Now he's dangerous. Now he's the... Uh, and Azuri, he's starting to put... He's got his running shoes on. He knew it. He, he took off. Break, 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 <laughs> and we see the end of the fourth round. You're watching in the red corner. We'll be back in just a few moments. Welcome back to In the Red Corner tonight. Coming to you from the ABA Stadium as referee Mike Landon brings out Muhammad Azari in the blue shorts and Aluri Moyoyo. Round number five. At this stage, uh, my co-commentator here, Brian Kerr, and I think we have both agree that uh, Muhammad Azari would be well ahead on points at this stage. I wouldn't like to judge this fight sitting next to you Brad being the expert <laughs> for judge look, 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 could look the fool break, break, break. no I think uh, 
Oh, you've been around enough. You're very modest. But uh, I think Muhammad Azuri is just effective aggression, cleaner punches, hasn't thrown as many um, and uh, as many punches as uh, Moyoyo. Moyoyo's trying. He hasn't given up. There he goes with the left lead. He backs Azuri up. Azuri's a real good counterboxer. Right, break, break, but I think break. that uh, Moyoyo has got a fair bit of power. And you look at the size different. Look at the body of uh, Moyoyo. He's certainly done the work. I just thought he'd come into this fight with a bit more of a work rate. He's come into a, a foreign country and he's got the he's got the local judges judging and uh, he's just not doing enough for mine. Yeah, he's, he looks a very laid back sort of a fighter, doesn't he? You know, and he's just taking his time, figuring that he'll. I think he thinks that his power is going to uh, to overwhelm Azuri, and I don't think he realises that Azuri is such a um, a competent boxer and and a skillful. You know, he's very skillful in his evasion skills. You know, so I think that uh, and that's that's certainly coming to the fore tonight. A great fight. I'd love to see Nerman Sabanovic, the OPBF Cruiserweight Champion and of course the Australian Super Cruiserweight Champion against Mohamed Azuri. It's been talked about for quite some time now. I That'd think they may have had it penciled in at one stage too. Yes, so they it was did. And, in uh, and, and I'd love, uh, you know, Red Corner um, to, uh, to be able to show that because that is a fight that I'm sure a number of the uh, Australians would like to see as uh, Moyoyo starts to unlock. <laughs> he goes even with a backhand there and Azuri had caught a smile from that. So what was that? Brad, some of the 2000 Olympians that stayed here, the Jackson Asiku, some of those guys have moved on to bigger and better titles. Uh, yeah, they have. And, uh, they, you know, they did very well. They got a great grounding here from Austin Taylor. And they, we, we, affect, uh, we affectionately called them the African Kings. And, uh, you know, over there in Adelaide and uh, the secretary over there, Frank Hadley, and a few of the boys over there really did a wonderful job in making, them, uh, making a home for them, giving them um, something to fight for and helping them establish themselves. And they got great effort and great reward from that because of the fact that they all... They fought for Australian titles. Norfolk Ben Rabar was another one. Uh, Fred Knuthier, another one. Um, Jackson Asiku, uh, Sandy Cazito. The names just go on and on, Brian. And they were all good. The, apart from being great fighters, they were quality kids outside the ring too. And uh, But unfortunately, they've, a few of them have left our shores and uh, have gone on. Jackson Asiku now, the Commonwealth Championship. Uh, the Commonwealth Champion won the championship, uh, I think, two months ago now. And it's good to see too because he's a nice young man. As we watch Muhammad Azuri, and you're watching with... In the red corner from the ABA Stadium in Auckland. This was recorded on September 22 this year. And it was right, a pretty right. good fight night. Has uh, the man from Canning Town in London as, as we see round number eight. And uh, I hope that we're going to see a little bit more action here. Oh, there's a big right hand by Azuri. Beautiful left lead. Classic left lead. Two left leads followed by the big right hand. That certainly caught the attention of uh, Olori Moyayo. He's got to have had some African existence, I think, Moyoyo. Uh, you know, we've uh, got him listed down as um, coming from uh, Canning Town in London, but uh, I would dare say with Johnny Duploy in his corner, I dare say he's from South Africa somewhere, and he's probably uh, calls uh, the UK home now, but with a name like Moyoyo and Olori. And they had some trouble getting him into the uh, country. He only flew in at the last available flight and uh, rushed him off to have his medicals and his blood tests. And, uh, and that kind of helped him in this preparation. And absolutely. He'll be jet lagged. He'll be jaded and he'll be tired. Right. You know, right. he's fighting when he should be sleeping. And uh, that's a very, very hard thing. And I know as an international ring official, I travel the world refereeing and judging. And, you know, I, I, there's a requirement really that we don't police enough that you need to be in the country one day for every 3,000 kilometres travel. But... Unfortunately, with aeroplane schedules, visa problems and difficulties that, that the industry participants, you know, oh, there's a hard left hook by Azuri. That certainly caught Moyoyo's attention. And uh, But getting back to that there, we have little problems as Azuri starts to unload a little bit. Um, you know, it makes it very, very difficult. And, and, of course, you can't be expected to ask your body the questions that this guy's asked him to fight at the highest level um, when you've only just got off a plane. And, and you know, from coming from London, it, it, it's a 23-hour flight, so he's probably been awake for 40 or 50 hours. And, you know, then to come over here and, you know, he's, as I said, he's fighting when he's asking his body to do things that he doesn't normally do when he's sleeping. You know, so it's really difficult. You're watching Muhammad Azuri, right, right. the uh, former... From Australia, Algerian, um, born and raised, Mostaganem in Algeria. PABA current PABA cruiserweight champion, WBA Pan African cruiserweight champion, and has beaten, as I said a little earlier, some of our very, very good fighters. Also, New Zealand uh, cruiserweight champion, 
record 20 fights, 18 wins. Just six wins by way of knockout, and he's only lost twice. And, right. uh, right. oh, there he goes. <laughs> A little bit. He's very sorry. I'm sorry that I hurt you with that one, but... <laughs> If Muhammad Azui had knockout power, he'd be in a, a major attraction in the U.S. by now? Oh, absolutely. And he'd be an attraction anywhere. And, I mean, look, you know, his boxing skills are what what sees him only being defeated, I think, uh, once he's had one draw, I think, uh, or two draws. He hasn't actually ever been beaten. I think he's had two draws in his professional um, career. He hasn't actually been beaten um, in his career. But he's not what we talk from the American side of things, Brian. As we see the end of round number eight... Fuck. We're back at round number nine here at uh, the ABA Stadium here in Auckland as we watch a Laurie Moyoyo take a, uh, take a little a bit job. of a stretch job to warm himself up um, against the WBA Pan-African Cruiserweight and PABA Cruiserweight champion Muhammad Azuri. And um, we're in round number nine. And this was the main event from Heartland Boxing's promotion that night, Brad, and uh, a good crowd in attendance. They had some corporate tables there, and it yeah, was something it was new for them to try. Well, it was, and they, they you know, the, the, the New Zealand people, are, they're, they're very well versed in the sport of professional boxing. They know their way. They like to see a good fight. We saw a great fight a little earlier on when we saw Peter Kariuki successfully defend his uh, Cruiserweight Championship against Mapush McCamby, and uh, they've had some great fights on the card tonight. They've all been competitive right. fights, and Heartland are doing a good job over there. They're going to have a real say in what goes on in the world proceedings, I can tell you. And Azuri just missing now, starting to tire a little bit in round number nine. Hard left hook to the body. Oh, it's a right hand. This is a good round for uh, Moyoyo, starting to unload a little bit. Uh, and I, I suspect that Muhammad Azuri is starting to slow down a little bit as Moyoyo starts to work the body. Good evasive skills. Confidence starting to rise a little bit now. Right. Right. Referee Mike Landon breaks him. No relation to the Mike Landon, the television actor. That's Michael Landon, isn't it, Mike? It looks a bit like him. <laughs> we followed. He's, what Moyayo is doing there, he's throwing that left hook off the calf, and it's, it's actually hit uh, Muhammad Azuri a couple of times. He's becoming a little bit ragged now. You know, we're in round number nine of a 12-round fight, and it's a, it's been a hard grueling fight and uh, he's thrown a lot of punches that have missed his timing's a little bit way out he's probably tired and he's probably jaded and but he's uh, watchful careful panther like looking to try and suck Muhammad Azuri in oh he comes with Another. the backhand Black <laughs> Azuri says hey what are you doing brother for our for our friends at home we know that you know you can only score a, a clean scoring punch and our judges tonight wouldn't have scored that punch even if it had have connected because you can only a punch that they will score is a punch that's delivered with the knuckle part of the glove to the scoring part of the body and uh, a backhand blow is not allowed you cannot throw a black backhand blow in professional boxing and that counts for knockdowns as well brad so Including if someone clubs them or hits uh, them with the inside of their palm absolutely now you know you can't win a fight on a foul so had that a punch have knocked uh, Muhammad Azuri down, well then what would have happened? We would have given him the benefit of the break and invoked the no foul rule and, and uh, the offender in Moyayo would have been sent to the neutral corner and Muhammad would have been given up to five minutes uh, break, uh, rest to uh, to recuperate from that because it's a, you know um, an unintentional foul but it's a, either way it's a foul and uh, as we watch uh, the action sort of start to warm up this is a real armour so that we see the end of the round, round number nine and we're going to take a short break and you're watching in the red corner and welcome back to In the Red Corner. We're coming to you from a fight that was shown September 22 in Auckland, New Zealand at the ABA Stadium between Muhammad Azuri, the former Algerian Olympian, against Aluri Moyoyo from Kenningtown in London. And uh, at this particular stage, we're in round right, number right, 11. Right. It's been a clear, decisive, sort of eked out little bit of a victory so far on our unofficial cards uh, to Muhammad Azuri. The silky smooth boxing skills, the evasive skills of Azuri has been able to avoid there. So that's just a slip. And... Uh, Brad, it seems to have been the same round fought 11 times so far. And uh, it's just that uh, the African is... Uh, 
he's just timing's not there. Well, it has, and then of course he, he's only arrived, uh, you know, on the last flight. I mean, he's, he only arrived within hours of the fight, which was no fault of his, unfortunately. You know, visa sec- and security requirements and stuff like that to get into the country, uh, unfortunately, made it very, very difficult for him to uh, to get here on time. And of course, that is severely going to hamper his uh, effectiveness tonight because he's jaded, he's tired. He's, as I said, he should be sleeping now, and in fact, he's actually fighting and he's needing to fight at the very best. He's asking his body to do unnatural things, fight for 36 minutes, you know, and if you've ever boxed and if you've ever hit a speedball or you've done boxer size, you'll know exactly how hard this is and what these guys are doing. And look at the fitness of Muhammad Azuri on the balls of his feet, moving around, trying to evade those big bombs of uh, oh, Laurie Moyoyo here at the ABA Stadium. And uh, that's testament to this young man's fitness and his ability to evade those big bombs as he goes searching down under the ribcage, Moyoyo. It's great to see two uh, cruiserweights so fit and so ripped up. And uh, usually a lot of the cruiserweights are just guys that are floating in between and that's sort of a get-out weight division, isn't it? Exactly. You know, most cruiserweight, 86.18 kilos, uh, and that's 190 pounds or... um, 13 stone 5 in the old language for those who aren't in, up with the kilos and uh, of course a lot of those guys realistically are blown up light heavyweights super middleweights they fight we saw a little earlier on you know uh, Peter Kariuki he's fought, his, week, he's fought, yeah. he fought a 76.2 kilos last week um, when he def- successfully defended his championship but he's fought up at 86.18 kilos so you know if they put a little bit of effort into their diet and their work but as I said those two young guys with Heartland promotions right in their corner now they've really given them something to fight for given them something to believe in and uh, and they know that they've got a future in this sport they know what they want and they're now going about going and getting it and we're watching Muhammad Azuri in the blue trunks with Alori Moyoyo from Canning Town in uh, Great Britain he's put up a worthy performance Moyoyo I'd like to see him out here I'll tell you what we should be having a bit of a talk to Angelo Di Carlo because he's a worthy opponent giving him some time to come out here settle down and uh, acclimatize a little bit as he uh, backs uh, Azuri, what about the turning skills there? Azuri's just slipped under that big right hand, turned him around. It's such an asset he's got, the defensive skills. Oh, yeah. As we see, the end of round number 11, as we come to the 12th and final round, as referee Mike Landon asked the boys just to touch gloves for the final round, both guys <laughs> look like they don't want to start. They touch gloves now. You're watching the 12th and final round here at In the Red Corner from ABA Stadium in Auckland. For the PABA and the WBA Pan-African Cruiserweight Championship. The WBA, one of the quality world championships around. And uh, you're watching Muhammad Azuri. Looks like at this particular stage going to successfully defend his championship. Brad, you've just brought up Angelo De Carlo's name. Now, Ace Promotions has got a big fight night, uh, December the 2nd, out at Mansfield Tavern. You're involved in that night out there? Yes, I am, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be a wonderful night. We've got uh, Johnny Cottrell, the uh, the former Australian uh, champion from New South Wales. He's taking on one of the uh, up-and-coming rising young guys by the name of Brad Hemming. Brad Hemming from the Gold Coast in Queensland has fought for the Australian title three times now, losing twice to Mick Shaw and once to Chris McCullen in a great fight up at the Mansfield Tavern. Uh, just a month ago and he's taking on Johnny Cottrell in what will arguably be his biggest test to date. This will be a real real battle because as well, Zuri backs up uh, Moyoyo into the red corner. Look at the body on Moyoyo. Gee, he's done the work and he's uh, he's come prepared but unfortunately for circumstances beyond his control he hasn't been at his best here tonight as he goes searching below the rib cage of Muhammad Azuri for a controlled, effective fight, Missouri. But just getting back to the to the Hemming Cottrell main event on uh, on December one at Mansfield Tavern on the Ace Promotions show, um, that's going to be a great fight because uh, Brad Hemming, great right hand, good, skillful young guy against the silky smooth boxing skills and got power, Cottrell and uh, JC. He's a good young kid. He's a lovely young guy, young Aboriginal, come from a great fighting family down in. Uh, down in uh, Central Coast in New South Wales. It's going to be a wonderful fight. Of course, we're going to see Nathan Briggs, who's recently challenged for the Australian heavyweight title, a, a regular here on in the red corner. He's going to be on the card too. Um, having a little bit of a trouble finding an opponent for uh, Briggs. Maybe Alex Leopold has been mentioned. Maybe a couple of the uh, Brian Fitzgerald has been mentioned. Alex Many, the former uh, New Zealand uh, amateur champion who fought uh, the big heavyweight uh, 
Makey um, all the noise at the moment. Hopawate, and uh, so it's going to be a great cut as Azuri starts to unload in his 12th and final round. They're trying to turn up the wick a little bit here at the ABA Stadium in Auckland. So it's all good. And you're going to see many of the regulars that you see on In the Red Corner. And it's wonderful to see the it, the commitment that In the Red Corner have given. We're going to try and bring you the very, very best in the domestic fights, fights that you can't see on pay per view television and on domestic TV. Uh, but you will see it on In the Red Corner. Yeah, for those viewers uh, in Brisbane, lucky enough to get out to the Mansfield Tavern. It's Wecker Road. Ace Boxing Promotions has all the information. Brad, as you call the last 10 seconds of this fight for us. Yeah, it's a good effort by Azuri. Hit and don't be hit. And there we see it. He's well pleased with his effort. And so is that young man, Alori Moyayo, as we go to the official judge's decision. Judge Zonic scores the fight 117 to 112. Judge McChrystal scores a fight 118 to 110, or by way of unanimous decision, and still part of champion. Hamid Asuri successfully defending his championship, and I don't think that uh, Moyoyo looks all that happy. Next week, don't miss some of the very best knockouts in the first round from October 13 at the Brisbane Broncos.